Okay, hello and welcome to everyone to the Sumo channel. Today, I have a very, very special guest with me, Mr. John Gunning, who, uh, as if you follow the channel, you probably heard him in the background uh, commentating on the NHK broadcast, the English language version. And today he has been nice enough uh, to come along. And uh, we're going to chat a little bit about the March Boss show, not too much. Some stuff, Sumo in general. We're going to give away some prizes. It's going to be all kinds of fun stuff. So, John, hello. How are you today? Hey, Jason. Good to see you. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Looking forward to this. This is my first live one of these on YouTube. So, you know, I'm nervous. Good luck. You'll, you'll do just fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess you're used to having your voice heard for two hours on a broadcast, but you really don't. They never cut away to your guys' face. No, we well we do the like I do Sports Japan. It's on NHK World, so we do documentaries oh, okay. on that. I'm in the studio on that, but that's mostly an international audience that gets to see that. So not a lot yeah, of people in California. Like, there was a TV station called TV Japan. You could pay, you know, it was like twenty five dollars a month, and you would get those programs. I was always jealous that we could get them there, but not here. Well, you, you know, can actually um, you can see them on the homepage. The Sports Japan is on the NHK World homepage. If you open up the page. Uh, during the like, it just opens up live during the broadcast. So there's a free app as well for iOS and Android. If you open the app, whatever is on live at that moment will be played on your phone. It's free. So oh, okay, all right. Well, I'll try to find that link and leave it down in the description for people that are interested. Yeah. Uh, dude. Uh, upcoming, we're we're filming this on uh, Sunday, March sixth, and uh, we have about a week to go before the March bus show starts, and that takes place in Osaka. Now, when you commentate for that, do you go to Osaka or do you stay in Tokyo? Uh, for Osaka, no. Usually we're in Tokyo. Okay. Um, it's just limited space in the stadiums, especially the regional ones. And yeah. uh, they give priority to the Japanese side for some reason. That's for some reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I think we're better than okay. We deserve so to be how there. Long, how long have you been comment commentating? Is that the right word? For NHK? Yeah. Uh, NHK, when did I start? About four years ago on NHK. Yeah, but I've been I, doing... I, I know I was watching because I've been watching since about 2005. Okay. And I know one day I was watching, I was like, that, 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 that accent's like Irish or something. What, what's that? What's that person? You know? So it wasn't Murray or Ross or one of the normals that I was used to. And, uh, I always enjoy your Ross comments. Is normal? <laughs> Because I think we're about the same age, and you drop all kinds of references when you uh, do your commentary, and, and I usually chuckle at myself for getting them. So uh, it's very entertaining. I'm sure. I'm assuming you have a lot of fun doing it. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's great. I mean, you know, you get paid to talk about sumo. You get paid to tell people your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to talk too much about the Marsh Boss Show because you're going to be on on day one. And, of That's course, right. you'll want to talk all about it on day one in your normal two hours uh, slot there. But mm -hmm. before you come on, <clears throat> you usually come on around 4 p.m. Japan time and do the Makuchi division. That's right. Uh, we, we will have had two big wrestlers already have fought in the Jurio division, and that's Endo and Osuna Rashi. Hmm. What, are your, what are your thoughts on them uh, being in Jurio this past show? Uh, well, you know, Bodhi obviously – like a brother, like a son to me, you know. I know I'm mm -hmm. talking most days. Uh, he just started training yesterday or the day before. Okay. Uh, he's exhausted from it, obviously. It's his first training since last year, since wow. he injured himself. So he's probably not in the greatest of conditions, but uh, I'm shocked that he actually, actually recovered in time to go back. I didn't think he'd be back until May. But he told me, that even when he was doing the operation in November, I was in the hospital with him. And uh, he was like, no, I'm definitely, definitely coming back for March, you know. Um, it's yeah. an ACL, an ACL and MCL thing. So usually those take, you know, six, nine months, even, mm. you know, you talk about football or something like that. There's no way anyone comes back like four or five months later. But um, seems to be stabilized, seems to be good. Uh, he'll do a lot better probably than Endo, who's just going back in without any kind of, you know, surgery or anything. Like he's just hoping it gets better on its own. But, yeah. That's probably not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, when let's let's talk a little bit. We don't want to talk too much about your your past, but what what got you into <laughs> sumo? What 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 got you into this? You know, you you're you're responsible for bringing people like Osuna Rashi and the Canadian Homare Nishiki over into Japanese sumo. So 
what's what's the deal? What's the deal? With so how, how did you, you know, uh, from Ireland, obviously, I assume you were born in Ireland and, and you grew up maybe in Ireland, I don't know, and then you're now in Japan and doing sumo, so connect a few of the dots. Well, when I was in Japan, I first lived in Osaka when I was in Japan, you know, and at that time I was a lot slimmer than I am now. I was about half the weight that I was <laughs> a few years later, but I was playing soccer. I was a sumo fan. I was watching it all the time on TV. I went, once I went to the live tournaments, you know, hooked completely. Right. Same as most people. Uh, just became more and more into it. And then when I, I got injured, when I moved to Tokyo, I got injured. Uh, I couldn't play soccer, couldn't run anymore. So I was looking for something to do, and sumo looked easy. And uh, I started training in Tokyo as a sumo club. And then, because that club, a lot of the... For it, a lot of kids trained in that club, and a lot of the kids then went on to pro sumo, so I got more and more involved. I moved to Ryogoku. Uh, I was meeting like Rikishi in the supermarket and convenience store every day. Like I lived next door to two hairs, so just the links got deeper and deeper, and I started doing more media work over the years, and I just started working for Daily Amiuri and then NHK and you know, various others. So it's just been a not any huge, big thing, but just a gradual integration into the sumo world, let's say, over the last 15 years, probably. Yeah. And then from, you know, being, being one of your followers on uh, Facebook and on Twitter, um, you're really, it seems like you're heavily involved in the amateur sumo world, like the amateur tournament and finding guys from other countries like Osuna Rashi and uh, Homaru Nishiki. So um, what, what can you tell uh, us about amateur sumo? I wouldn't say I find guys because usually there's a lot of people who want to join pro sumo, but they, wow. their, their image of what it is is very, very different from the reality. So normally when someone contacts me, I spend about six months trying to dissuade them <laughs> from joining. You know, right. it's true, honestly. I just tell them, you know, it's, it's not fame and money and women and all those things that you, what you think it is early on. I mean, they might come at some stage in, in later in their career, but you're going to go through hell for a few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, not, it's mostly not inside the ring because anyone who wants to join sumo from abroad is probably big and you know, strong enough and mean enough anyway. So right. it's language, the culture. So you know, you, you've moved to Japan. You know how difficult it can be here sure. at first. But you know, throw the whole sumo world on top of that and it's just like 10 times more difficult. So yeah. Uh, I usually spend ages trying to dissuade people to come, but then if they really, really want to, like Osinarashi or Homar and Nishiki, if I can't change their mind, then I help them. Um, Osinarashi and Homar and Nishiki, there was the, the whole thing was a little bit different because, well, Bodhi Osinarashi was emailing me from when he was like 14 years of age saying he wanted to join. And uh, it was only after he finally got somebody else to help him and came to Japan, I was able to help him. Uh, Homar and Nishiki basically, I did the whole thing myself, like from first contact, and then Konishiki helped me when he came in because obviously Konishiki grew up with Nishikido Yakata. They came up together in the same stable. Um, so, you know, connections are very, very important in Japan. But, yeah, I'm involved in the amateur side. I fought three times in the World Championships. Uh, Badland. Uh, I, I do the, in the tournament, I help them by doing announcing the East and West and who's coming. And oh, good. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff for the amateur side as well. Now that takes place in different countries, not Japan. Is that right? That's right. It was in it was in Japan this year for the first time in ten years, but it's in Mongolia next year. Okay. So, yeah, Mongolia, the the home of sumo. <laughs> well, maybe that's something we should talk about. I don't know. Obviously, <laughs> Japanese fans so excited in January to finally see a Japanese wrestler win. So we'll have to keep our eyes on him this bus show. Uh, Koto Shogiku and see if he can repeat or do as well. Um, I, I, you know, personally, I don't think he's going to become a Yokozuna, but uh, that's just me. And that's mm. from years of watching the guy. And uh, I think, you know, he had a nice one-off. Um, Baruto, Koto Oshu, so many of the guys, you know, they have that one tournament where they push through and they do well. Uh, but it's hard to do it again. It is, yeah. And obviously... You have not only probably the all-time greatest Yokozuna at the top of the rankings, and then another two very, very strong Yokozuna, Terna Fuji, who's future Yokozuna most likely. But, you know, all of them have injury question marks. This is something I wrote a little bit for 
on yeah. the magazine and side is that none of them are in the best of shape and last five tournaments have been won by five different people so wow. it's not as certain yeah it's the first time in 16 years i think that that's happened so wow. it's a little bit more wide open than we expect and you know it's not like he just suddenly had a good tournament for no reason i mean he's changed his lifestyle he's gotten married changed his training um obviously he's been very busy afterwards but you know he's continuing with the same training so he hasn't been injured so you know i'm probably a little bit more optimistic about his chances than other people would be but i mean the odds are probably against him but yeah he might do well he might do well now we saw uh you know i, I like i said i started watching in 20 2005 and um you know i went home for a year after i finished being a jet teacher and uh when I came back in 2010, sumo was pretty popular, and then we had some bad stuff happen, the tsunami and other things in 2011. But we've really mm -hmm. seen sumo steadily rise in popularity since about 2013. Um, as somebody that's sort of closer to it and on the inside a bit, what do you account for the rise in popularity? Why do you think the Japanese fans are coming back and, you know, more people are, you know, the live seats are selling out right away, etc.? cetera? And, uh, yeah? <laughs> I mean, it's mostly Endo. Uh, it's a big, big... It, I mean, you need something like that, that big kick, but uh, it's probably just the icing on the cake. I mean, the Sumo Association have been... It's like they woke up a few years ago and realized that they're competing with not just other sports, but everything else, the net, and all the different things that people can be attracted to. So sure. uh, I was looking at some photos when I went to the Dohyamatsuri, which is the ceremony they hold on the Saturday before a tournament where they consecrate the ring. Uh, ten years ago, nobody, I was literally the only non-Sumo Association person at it, I think, in the morning. I went there one basho, and now Kogikan is filled, like there's lines around, because they started announcing it on Twitter and Instagram, and they've connected through social media very, very strongly. Um, they've brought in Waso Day, where if you wear Japanese traditional clothing, you get special prizes. Right. They've branched out a sumo boat tour where you can go on a boat cruise with Rikishi. Like they've been much, much more proactive about reaching out to fans and connecting with them. Especially and I've been, you know, when I was out in Shimane, which is the boondocks, mm. the, the absolute boonies of Japan, um, had a fantastic day at a regional tournament down in Masuda in Shimane. Mm. And all the big guys were there. Hakuho, Harama Fuji at the time. You know, I mean, you know, everybody. And it's like a tiny more intimate it's laid back they have fun you can take pictures with the rikishi sometimes i got to give hakuho a high five i mean that kind of thing is just fantastic because you know the the sumo only takes place in four cities that's right so a lot of people that haven't been to japan don't realize how far afield you know you can be from say you know osaka or tokyo it can really be a far trip to go and try to visit there i've actually seen sumo live in three of the, the venues, all the non-Tokyo venues, but I've never actually gone to the Koku Geekon. Yeah, you have to come up to we'll take you around. Oh, no, I the guys, you know? out there. So, yeah. okay, well, I, we, we've been chatting for a little while. Let's let's give away a prize. Let's do something fun for the people that have okay. stuck with us. So what do we okay. want to do for this first one? Banzuke. Let's do Banzuke. So, <clears throat> I guess most fun. people know what these Plenty are. Fun. Hey, is. Yes, these are the ranking sheets. So this is a written a special sumo calligraphy, every single wrestler from the Yokozuna, from Hakko Dance, the new guys down here who've just joined. So they're brought out, they've been brought out for, I think, was it 250, 300 years consecutively, every single tournament. A uh, new one is brought out of all the rankings. So uh, let's say we give away five. Kumarayuki is in Sandamne, right? Yeah, he is. Let me see. He is just around... Uh, where are we? Sandame. So he's just okay. around here. He dropped down a little bit because he's losing record last time. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I give away five of these. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's do it. We can either do, we won't do it for the first five people because obviously people are in different time zones and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, anyone who gives the correct answer, we we'll put them into a pot and we pick out five and we we'll give them. I'll just give them. I'll give them until um, opening day, which is next Sunday. And I'll monitor the comments and take care of that. No worries. And okay. then I'll contact you with the prize winners, et cetera. And uh, 
uh, okay. we can take care of that. So um, question is, category? behind me, I don't know how clear the screen is now, but uh, behind me there are four tegata, four handprints, simple handprints. If you can identify who those four rikishi are, you're in with a chance of winning one of those banzuke. Simple. So they will be able to write their name, maybe in Romaji is fine. Uh, yeah. The names of those four wrestlers who have their uh, their hand on the thing with their autograph, as it were, in kanji behind you. Okay. Good. Can you That's read? Good. Are they legible? I think so. Plus, they can pause the video. Okay. But let me let me stop talking. You say something because the camera will go to you. <laughs> we say something. So. <laughs> okay. So. You've got four handprints behind me, so I don't know if people know what they are. Usually, they're the autographs of the sumo world. People usually stamp red ink or black ink on a shikishi, which is a traditional Japanese square card, and then they use a special Japanese calligraphy to write their name. So even Japanese people can't often read what's written on them. So the names themselves are written in a special style. And of course, if the writing loads them, it's like autographs. You know, right. a lot of autographs aren't legible. So. Um, but there is a if if you know about sumo and you know about rikishi and you've seen their tegata, you can recognize a lot of them at a glance. So I think probably I I, that's a, that's a that's a good tough quiz. I would only be able to get two. I can see two that I recognize. The other two I would not know. So good luck to everyone. Three are not that difficult. One of them probably is, but all of them have been uh, makuchi in the top half of makuchi. All of them. At least uh, so. how many years? Uh, various. So two of them are still active, two of them are no longer active. Okay. Good hints, good hints. All right, All right so there you guys go. Uh, leave a comment on this video uh, for, for me, and I'll, I'll relate to John. Um, he's giving away five official, authentic bonzake to people who can identify the four um, handprint wrestlers that are behind his head there. All right, we're going to take a break, and uh, we're going to stop the video now, but we're going to come back with a part two and chat more about Sumo. We're going to talk about what John's got coming up on his own YouTube channel, perhaps, and uh, some other fun stuff. And I've got questions from my Facebook page. I tweeted out that we were going to have this chat, and you guys sent in questions. So come back for part two. We'll see you in a minute.